Welcome back to End Time Prophet Judge, part number 50. I would like to let you under, uh, know um, this is actually a completion to 49. I found out that it's easier to go onto YouTube when the, when the teachings are, are shorter. So I'm trying to keep them under 30 minutes. And even if I have to do two in the night uh, or in an evening, we'll do that because it's easier to upload it to, to YouTube. So uh, piggybacking on to 49 where I just left off at in Isaiah chapter 45 verses 1 through 7 where it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I delude the Lord do all these things. As I was saying, that's the Lord himself taking ownership, responsibility, accountability. And that's what we need to do. We need to follow the Lord's steps. If we want to be righteous, we have to do righteous things. If we want to be holy, we have to be holy things. If we want to live pure, we have to live through pure purity. Romans chapter 12. Uh, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that it is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, now the part I wanted you to understand is and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so if you have a relationship with the Lord if you're being led by the Spirit of God okay you cannot be doing the same acts functions as in the world in the past okay? your, your decisions have to be different as I said somebody asked me can you change I said yes you can change but you have to actually change And it's usually sacrifice, selflessness instead of selfishness, yield instead of pride, yield instead of stubbornness, yield to the Word of God, yield to the will of God, yield to the Spirit of God, yield, shut up, be quiet. If any of you have been arrested or watched any TV programs, you know what being Mirandized means. You have the right to remain silent, but people don't know when to shut up. You have the right to remain silent. That's what they did. And they, they talk themselves into it deeper and deeper into crime. Well, I'm telling you, you have the right to remain silent. When you remain silent, you can't go into further trouble. <clears throat> Let's look at Isaiah chapter 46. Now, Remember this in one of my past teachings. There's two tenses in Hebrew. Okay? A perfect tense and an imperfect tense. The perfect tense is a completed act and an imperfect tense is an incompleted act. Now why do I say that? Because when the Lord is speaking, okay, in faith we're believing that it's a completed act. Whether it's happened or not in the natural, we're believing it's a completed, completed act. So if we look at Isaiah chapter 46, and I guess we can start in verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel, 
from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. Hearken unto me, you stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. We were talking about that. I bring near my righteousness. It shall be, not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. He's here for it. His righteousness is here for us. All we have to do is embrace it. Grab onto it. Embrace it. Is it going to be different than when you first met the Lord? Of course the way you're going to be thinking is going to be different. But the Lord, as he said, he's planned it, he's purposed it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You can have whoever you want in Congress, in Senate, in President, all these people, climate control and climate change, change. it doesn't matter, Jack. Because whatever the Lord has already said, is going to happen. Declaring the end. In this. It says in the King James. Declaring the end from the beginning. In the Tanakh. In verse 10. It says. From the beginning. I foretold the outcome. And from the earlier times. <clears throat> from the earlier times. That what was not. I say and my plan will stand. And I will carry every desire. So from the beginning to the end. And declaring from the beginning. Here. Doesn't matter. What Satan did. When he kicked them out. Of heaven. The throne room. The Lord already had a plan. He had a plan that you would be watching this video right now. You're seeking him. An end time prophet judge. This is a teaching you. If you. Decide to. Take that leap. Of faith. And embrace it. Okay, you need to. Be repulsed by sin. You need to be repulsed by anything that is not of the Lord. You need to be repulsed by anything that is not of righteousness, holiness, purity. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, here on your head, one square foot of real estate, is where the battle goes. Starts and ends. Whether. Something from the past you thought of. Or the devil put it in your mind. I don't care. If it's not from the Lord. Cast it down. If it keeps coming back Pastor Mike. Then keep casting it down. I'm thinking about sex Pastor Mike. Well cast it down. I'm thinking about drinking Pastor Mike. Cast it down. I'm thinking about smoking, Pastor Mike. Cast it down. How many times? How many times it comes? If it comes a thousand times, you cast it down a thousand times. Bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. That is spiritual warfare. You don't quit. If you go into a fight and you and the guy throws or girl throws one punch at you and you duck, is that it? Aren't you going to duck the next punch also, and the next one, and the next one? Or you just stop after one punch? You will never be defeated if you don't quit. The devil tries to wear you down. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. And that's been attributed to Vince Lombardi. Don't get tired. 
Be prepared to fight. Matter of fact, you shouldn't want to fight. Always be prepared to fight. The devil, not your neighbor. Be rep repulsed means to push back. Sin comes around you, comes into your mind. A thought of the past that you did was not of the Lord. Say, oh no, the Lord already forgave me for that. I cast it down. Don't let it start thinking, well, I wonder why I'm thinking about that person. Forget about it. Cast it down immediately. If it's an ex-lover, an ex-connection, an ex-whatever. This atmosphere of your being, from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, needs to be whole. One in Christ. One with Christ. One for Christ. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal flesh, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This is your past. Whatever those strongholds were. Sex, drugs, alcohol, rock and roll, I don't know. But whatever those strongholds are, God will pull them down. But you have to do it first. Casting them, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What's the best part of the knowledge of God? His mercy, His graciousness, His forgiveness. Don't lose that. If you have a thought and you go, oh my God, don't forget about God's mercy, God's compassion, God's mercy, mercy and His forgiveness. <coughs> he forgave me. I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm moving on. <coughs> and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's your mind. Have the mind of Christ. It's your mind. Don't allow anything in there that's not of the Lord. You have to be diligent, vigilant on that. And believe and have faith that the Lord is going to do exactly that and keep you available through purity. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If we can look at Isaiah 61. <coughs> Excuse me. Isaiah 61, let's put verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath appointed me to preach good tidings, Unto the meek, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Now that, in other things, is to set the captives free, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our Lord of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn, verse three, that mourn in Zion. <clears throat> to give unto them the beauty for ashes, the oil for joy, for mourning, the garment of praise, <coughs> excuse me, for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I've said righteousness or righteous at least five or six different times today. <laughs> that he might be glorified. Everything should be for the glory of God. Everything should be for the glory of God. Everything should be for the glory of God. Pastor Mike, I don't know how I keep falling into the same situation. I do. You leave God out of the conversation. You leave Yeshua, Jesus Christ's name, out of your conversations. Out of your daily walk. If somebody you think might not know the Lord, I don't want you to preach to them. Okay, but you can use Jesus Christ's name as a as a as a barometer, 
an old friend calls you. So what have you been up to? Just studying the way of Jesus Christ. I guarantee you they will hang up. Unless they really want to learn. Unless they really want to know. It worked for me. When I first got saved, I, I, was, I, was, I wanted not to do these things in sin. I'm going, okay, I'm going to church. I'm reading the Bible. What am I leaving out, God? And he told me very simply, you're leaving me out. As soon as I started naming his name, when people asked me what I was doing, girls called me. Ah, they scatter like cockroaches when you turn on the light in the kitchen. Oh, I like you sober, but I don't like the, the God part of you. I said, you can't have me without the God part. Jesus Christ is like the, they say, uh, I forgot which uh, justice says that the best uh, disinfectant is the sun. Well, the best disin spiritual disinfectant is the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. You bring him up in your conversations and people will scatter. If they don't scatter, then that's the atmosphere of the people you want around you. It'll get rid of the snakes in the grass and the, sh and the wolves that are dressed like sheep. You gotta be diligent and be repulsed by sin. And the people around you need to be, be equally be repulsed by sin. Let me read uh, Malachi. Look at Malachi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Second Chronicles. Chronicles chapter 36. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22. Remember we read Isaiah 45 and mentioned the uh, verse 1 says, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus. Well, let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 22. It says, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, <clears throat> that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, verse 23, thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. Now, if you believe the prophecy that President Trump is the Cyrus from Isaiah 45, he is also the Cyrus from 2 Chronicles 36. Verse 22. Now Persia is our Iran. It's not unusual now in the past week that students and mainstream citizens of Iran have been revolting against the Ayatollah and have actually been waving pictures of President Trump. Cyrus. God has said, God has placed, God is going to do, it's done. It's like if you know who's going to win the game, if you know the outcome, why not be on that side? I know the outcome of the Lord. We live in eternally. Take that. And while you're here physically, as I mentioned last week, Caleb and Moses, there's no reason for us to be physically feeble. You can be as strong <clears throat> as Moses was, his, his eye was not dim, 120 years, and Caleb was 85. 
and the strength did not abate. But you got to do it for the glory of the Lord. If we would look through Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, um, I'm going to focus on verse 7, but let me read from verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, <clears throat> thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Verse 5, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. 6, I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. 7, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, and I have made him. Everything we do needs to be for the Lord's glory. If you're going to walk and say that you're a child of God, then you have to do it for His glory. Marriages, work, school, anything's got to be for the glory of the Lord, not for your own glory. If you wonder why things are not looking up for you, it's because you're not putting God first. And you don't have to be a pastor or a preacher to put God first. I started teaching because I put God first at work, I put God first at home in my marriage, I put God first in everything I was doing. That's how I was able to do this. God put me here. I never wanted to teach or preach. But because I put God first, probably said, okay, let me use you. You can be what you want to be through the glory of God. His glorified body that was resurrected. If you have not, and if you are not, taking communion daily, I suggest, what are you waiting for? And yesterday as I was thinking, meditating on the Torah, I just, I just felt this anger against sin. I couldn't stand it. I can't stand it. And I said, this is good. Not against sinners. Understand that. Okay. But again, I can't allow it to enter into my mind. I haven't allowed it for years, but it, it, just became, it, it, it bubbled up inside of me. And the word repulse just kept coming up to me. Strange that we're talking about in the beginning, but I want you to understand warfare started in the beginning. The Lord created it. He created the heavens and the earth, but he also darkness and evil also. So Please take communion every day. Please say the examination prayer every day. Please examine yourself every day. And stay holy with the Lord. And as the Lord told the young lady, go and sin no more. Amen.